Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So we never stop looking at the horse racing um, and we've had a quick look at some of the racing over uh, next weekend. Um, I've also spotted something um, with the Cheltenham Festival in mind that catches my eye. If you've been following me on Twitter you may have already seen it. Um, so let's start off with next weekend. Um, the Coral Trophy Handicap Chase, lucrative handicap, uh, huge prize money for this race. Let me just quickly have a look what it is to win it. It is £85,000 to win it. Now, Captain Orr could run in it um, after winning at the weekend, or winning yesterday, sorry. Um, he would get a penalty, but I still think he'll be out of the handicap with Frodon surely going to run. You know, Frodon loves uh, Kempton. Um, obviously a course and distance winner, dropping down in class after previously running in like the King George just three runs, uh, two runs ago, he was third in a King George. Um, he is a former King George winner as well. So I can't understand why he would not run. So that would mean the handicap weights are quite high. Um, a 161 horse will be top weight. And it's a horse near the top of the handicap that I'm quite interested in here. And that horse is Clondor Castle. So Clondor Castle is currently 14s and 16s, 10s in places to run in this, 10s at the sponsors. Now, I'd be very surprised if he didn't turn up here. Uh, first of all, he won this race two years ago. Um, over course and distance, off the same 154 mark, that was this one here. Now, if we have a look at his racing when he's just been running in handicaps... He won here of 154. He was winning at Newbury back here of 151. He was second at Aintree in the Old Roan Chase of 149. And he won at Warwick of 143. So his last four handicap runs have been a first at Warwick, a second at Aintree, a first at Newbury. And a first at Kempton off this 145 mark, that 145, 154 handicap mark. I think that's very important. And, um, you know, he then went to uh, Aintree. He finished second at Aintree in a grade one. He finished third at Weatherby in the Charlie Hall, a grade two. He finished fourth at Haydock in the Betfair Chase behind Aplutar. And he's had one run since um, a layoff when he finished second to Pick Dory, albeit he was beaten 16 lengths. What we've got to remember is Pick Dory went off just 3-1 to one yesterday against Shishkin and Fakadudere, and actually beat Fakadudere, probably suggesting he may be getting towards that grade 1 company that I think Paul Nichols has always thought he would be. So, Clondor Castle, probably on his return, in a grade 2 Sylvaniaka Conti chase at Kempton, probably bumped into a grade 1 horse, now, he was uh, quietly ridden. He ran on um, before running on into second, beating Paint in the Dream, St. Calvados, Cool Cody, Angel's Breath. Okay, they are handicappers that he was beating. But he hadn't run for 420 days. You know, it, it probably suggested that he wasn't completely finished with. You know, if he'd come back and he'd finished sixth of six or pulled up, um, then they might have looked at retiring him at the age of 11. But he didn't. He finished second. He ran on quietly. Now, that was over half a mile shorter than his ideal. You know, he's, he wouldn't have beaten Pick Dory over three mile. But you would imagine he would have got a lot closer. Now, off his 154 mark, because of Frodon's um, participation in this race, he would only carry 11 stone 7, which I think is quite nice for him. And... Yeah, the fact that he's actually won this race before, off 154, beating Eric La Rouge, um, stayed on strongly as well. If you read to the write-up, led on inside two out, clear before last, stayed on strongly. Um, he was a very, very good winner that day at 17-2, to two, so 8.5-1. to one. If he's anything like that ability, you know, if he retains that ability, he's going to go really close here. And... He's had the, I think it's a 42 day break. He had a 49 day break. The one, the, the, a 49 day break when he won, um, and he was stepping up from two and a half mile back up to the three mile to find his win. You know this, the, the Kempton two and a half, Kempton three. He does the same again 
I think it might have even been the same race. I'm just going to have a quick look. It was, he finished second to a Paul Nichols horse in a um, Savinio Conti chase. Probably running on, held up, pushed along, lost second, went second again, two out. No chance of winner. You know, he's unfortunately at, at his age, he's not going to be winning graded races, but he could certainly go close in this handicap. So that's one I like for the weekend. Um, Clondor Castle at 14s and 16 to 1. Quick mention about uh, Kitty's Light. Obviously, we're on the double. Kitty's Light, Captain Noor. A Captain Noor won for us yesterday. Hopefully, Kitty's Light can win on Saturday. As you know, I'm a massive fan of uh, Kitty's Light, especially when he wants this trip. And that kind of leads me on to another uh, post I made earlier this year. And that was, these are so well handicapped. And I highlighted Fiddler on the Roof. Unfortunately, he's not run since, and he's not going to run until Christmas at least. Beakstown hasn't run since. Kitty's Light, I've said he's so well handicapped, I can really see him winning not one, but two feature handicaps as soon as he gets three and a half to four mile. He gets out of the weekend. I also highlighted Cap de Noor, who won the race um, yesterday, having finished second in the Skybet Handicap Chase. I highlighted Senior Citizen, who won next time out at 12 to 1. History Bear's been a bit disappointing. Teddy Blue finished third in the Betford Hurdle. York C finished fourth in the Betford Hurdle. And Oscar Elite actually won a grade two yesterday. Um, so this. Uh, thread has worked out quite nicely as well this blog post so there are um reasons to read my blog posts the next one i want to talk about very quickly is did you see this on twitter not this this a plan hatched in the summer is inching closer for harry whittington who will next week enter rouge vif in the grand annual now rouge vif made my horses to follow um if we actually find the latest blog post as well i have updated the blog post he made my horses to follow this year with the Grand Annual in mind. If I just load it up. Uh, could well be aimed at the Grand Annual at the Cheltenham Festival with a couple of hopeful tilts in graded company before that. He's been a bit all over the place. But I had noticed that um, Rouge Vip, I thought there was some really obvious races for him. So obvious that I actually made a blog post about it. Uh, Rouge Vip. Why doesn't he run at Warwick in January? He didn't. He went to Doncaster. He disappointed. And maybe this was the reason. If we actually look at my uh, tweet here, you'll notice I actually highlighted Rouge Vif for the Grand Annual and he didn't run back in March 2022. So the fact that he is going this year, um, I'll be very keen on him in the Grand Annual. And you can currently get 25 to 1 about him in the Grand Annual. Currently available at 25 to 1. And off a 137 handicap mark, he's likely to squeeze in at the very bottom. And I think he would be a great bet at 25 to 1. So there's just a few things I've noticed um, over the last day or so. As, as I said, I'll keep looking for things. Um, so Clondor Castle, I'm going to have a bet on in the Coral Trophy. Uh, Rouge Vif in the um, Grand Annual. And yeah, just keep following my uh, blogs and my tweets. Um, because I will keep finding you winners. So thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And let's look forward to next weekend's racing already.